opinions expressed on the Custody Queen show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal, professional legal advice. The persons discussed are fictional and not based on actual clients. Thought it was love, had kids in between. You can count on us with the custody queens. Yeah, you can count on us with the custody queens. All right, welcome back to another wonderful day with the custody queens. I'm here with Kristen Holstrom. My favorite blonde. We're also joined by intake specialist and long-term friend, Janelle. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We are very excited to have you today. So for everybody listening, you know how we talk about our intake team a lot. Janelle is one of my supervisors. She has been with me for almost eight years. Wow. And when I say Janelle was a baby when I hired her, she was 19. And she was, you know, she was this beautiful, gorgeous, little petite, kind, just, you know, kind of just blossoming. And I could not be more proud of her as a woman as an and as an employee than I am today. It, you really, you really are a breath of fresh air, Janelle. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, and Janelle has been through everything with Sam and I. She has seen us at our best and she has seen us at our not so best. So, Janelle, what's it like when Sam gets moody? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. Usually, Sam, when you have bad days, the door is closed. So I don't really, I don't really See, know too much. Boundaries. <laughs> so we just kind of leave you, let you be. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, there's just too much work for one person to do. So you just have to close the door and get it done. Yeah, that's okay. What's it like when Kristen's moody? Oh my gosh, you guys are putting me on the spot. We <laughs> always do that. We like to make it uncomfortable. <laughs> it's the same, I would say. Usually we kind of just do our own thing, keep going about our day. Kristen, if you need me, I'm here. You know where to find me. But You can always tell if I'm struggling. You'll send me a text and maybe like six hours later I'll get back to you. Or, you know, if it's a good day, she'll send me a text, you know, saying, hey, what's your availability? And I'll get right back to her. Yeah. So, you know, that, that can kind of gauge you know, set expectations of what you're going to get from me that day. Yeah. So when Janelle started, you know, obviously there's there's training that goes involved in the intake process. And that's kind of what we want to do with this show is, is tell our listeners, you know, what it's like from the onset when you call the custody queens. How do we navigate your case, whether it's a divorce, a domestic violence case, a paternity case, a custody case? What does it look like? How do you start? And, and, you know, what is the customization that you get from the Custody Queens? Because I truly believe that we deliver an experience rather than just hiring, you know, the first attorney that you find on Yelp and, and moving forward. Our process is strategic, it is custom, and it is an experience from the onset that you get a team. You get an attorney, you often get an associate that goes with it, we have case managers, we have legal support, we have law clerks, we have discovery clerks. So you are getting an entire team that is behind you. So, you know, for instance, Sam's in court a lot. If Sam is unavailable because she's in court, guess what? You get me, you get nine other attorneys, and then you have the support staff. So you will never, I promise you, you will never call our office and not be able to speak with someone. It may not be, you know, you may not get the answer you want right then and there because we may have to, you know, get a hold of the attorney, but you will, you're not gonna leave a voicemail and hear from someone four days later. You're not gonna get a virtual assistant. If you call during normal business hours, which is eight, you know, I think 7.30 to 5.30, you will get a live person that answers the call. But before we get into all this and, and we talk about Janelle and how she's grown and, and what she does to make this experience even better, we're going to make Janelle feel a little uncomfortable for a hot minute. And Again. we're going we're gonna to break right <laughs> into uh, the CQ Talk Box. Sam, what is that? All right, so the CQ Talk Box is really a brainchild again of Kristen's. But what we did was we took... Uh, and we spent a lot of time doing this. We took a lot of questions and we put them together so that there is a set of cards. And the purpose is that everyone can sort of sit down, ask each other questions and really listen to the answers. Part of it's bonding, part of it's communication, part of it's understanding. There's a lot of overlap in family law. Kristen and I use these cards a lot, sometimes to make fun of each other, sometimes to talk about real issues. But we're very excited about this and we want to share it all with you. Yeah, it will be available to the public very soon. You'll be able to purchase them. We we 
itemized every question in there. And so it is it is specific to the age of the person. Are you having this conversation with your child? Are you having it with your spouse? Are you having it with your ex-partner? Are you having it with a co-parent? Are you having it, you know, really with anybody? There's different questions for age appropriate, you know, for there are questions that vary based on the age appropriateness. So, you know, a lot of these questions may be uncomfortable to answer. They may be questions that you would never ask someone. But what I find interesting is you get information that is way below the surface. So when I'm talking to my daughter or even my five-year-old, because he is really fun to have conversations with now, it's so much more than how was your day? How was school? What did you do? You know, it's asking, so, you know, do you have new friends and how do they make you feel? What did you do at practice? Did you learn something new? You're going beyond the surface questions that, that everybody answers and you're really getting to engage in meaningful conversation. All right, Janelle, so we have different categories of questions and you know, this one is kind of a feel good question. So we are gonna ask you, what is something about you that I don't know? Huh, I don't know. We've been together for almost eight years. I feel like there's so much, I don't know if there's one thing that you don't know about me. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot that you don't Um, want your boss to know. Huh, let's see. Have you ever called in sick when you weren't sick? Definitely. <laughs> the pause means yes. The Monday flu. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, something that you may not know about me is that when I was a younger kid, I was like the bad kid. Like I was the rebellious. Because now I, you look at me and I seem like the goody good or like I don't do anything wrong. Okay. Kind of I can see that a little bit. Um, so you gave your parents, you yes, put them through the ringer? Yes, I gave them a heck of a time. So. Pray for me when I have children, because they're probably going to get me back. Karma. From, Karma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, when you say rebellious, were you like, you know, just testing them, or did you really give them a run for their money? Um, I would say I was that 16-year-old that thought I knew everything and that wanted to make my own decisions kind of thing. <laughs> I think that was all of us, right? Yeah. I was a rule follower. Every, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I think every 16-year-old thinks they know everything. I mean... Heck, my eight-year-old thinks she knows My everything. sister made enough mistakes for me not to. I would watch her and go, bad call. <laughs> well, I, I like that. Thank you for sharing. Um, I love the honesty that we all have on the show. It, it, you know, it makes it real. And when we go through this process with you, I say it all the time that we're on this journey with you. And we're so much more than attorneys. We're humans. You're getting to know us on that human level. And we get to know you guys on that level when you send in your questions or you call us at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. So Janelle the Rebel. Okay, got it. All right. Well, I, I you know, I, yeah, when you have kids, it's going to come back full circle. I, know. I have a question for Kristen. Yeah. Not now, because I know that it's not it doesn't really count if you're calling out sick on yourself. But have you, Kristen, ever called out sick when you weren't? Oh gosh, when I was younger, heck yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that might have been the period where Dane fired me or I quit, <laughs> and we ha- we did not have a meeting of the minds. But yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, we go to an angel game happy hour, and then you know six o'clock rolls around real quick. <laughs> but oh yes, for sure. That I'm a little more understanding with the the Monday flus. Yeah. As long as it's not a, you know, habitual pattern. Yeah. All right, Sam, what, what, is something, I, I don't, what is something I don't know about you? That might be a little tricky, but I'm sure there's something. Hmm. Uh, I would say maybe, when, maybe going back to when I was younger, I was an extremely picky eater. Like, you couldn't order something off the menu. Now, like, if I go to a restaurant with Kristen, she orders a whole menu and I can eat whatever, try new things. Probably until I was like 13, 14, like I pretty much just ate eggs. Like I wouldn't, I couldn't, I hated hamburgers. I wouldn't touch taco, like meat, no, no, thank That's you so at all. That's so stressful for a parent. Chili, no thanks. Like just, there you was a whole eggs lot of eggs for breakfast, lunch, eggs. and dinner. I literally, and I ran cross country. I literally eat scrambled eggs, bacon, have a glass of milk, go run, maybe come, maybe come home, have some barbecue Lay's chips. Very, very unhealthy. Well, one time Sam tried to make eggs in the microwave in the office, and the entire office smelled like sulfur for like four hours. Yeah, that did happen. <laughs> and then you, you know, Sam, I don't eat Sam work. was a little moody because I was like, I came yeah. in later. I think I was in quarter something, and I was like, "What is that smell?" And Sam's like, "I just made eggs." <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, you know, and so, and that's the story of how I started locking myself in my office. I think I tried to make shrimp one day at the office. That didn't go well either. So I you tried know. to make fish. Yeah. Yeah. My, my husband makes cauliflower rice pretty much five nights a week. So every day I walk in from work and my entire house smells like cauliflower rice. <laughs> it's like the new, uh, you know, aroma of my house. All right, Kristen, so you answer that question. What's something that I don't know about you? I mean, you pretty much know everything. You know I don't use a towel when I get out of the shower. You know that I'm a quasi hoarder with with purses and totes and hoodies is my new one. Uh, Shoes for sure. Um, Something you don't know. I mean, I'm kind of an open book, dude. Like... At what age did you first get your heart, your heart broken? First time? Probably about 17, 18. I was a, definitely a late bloomer, like on all levels. All right. my, my parents had it down. I, you know, I played soccer from high school to club in Huntington, back to Garblinda. So there was no time. So I, I, uh, I would say my senior year of high school. Were you a shy kid? No. Were you a shy kid, Jenna? No. I wouldn't say that. I was. I I could see that. I was super shy. Yeah, I could see that. I would be loud in an environment where I knew people, but if I first was meeting someone, no chance. Yeah, I was I'm literally trying to think of something that you don't know. And I mean I'm I mean, you know all the things I do at two in the morning, you know, what I fall asleep to. I mean, you know everything. Yeah, Janelle, you missed it. Kristen actually falls asleep to SEAL Team. Oh, my gosh. You know, gun, very, bullets flying in the back room. That's how I go to sleep. Very relaxing. Very relaxing, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on. Okay, so let, let's do one more question, and then we'll get into, we'll get into uh, what Janelle does. But this is a good one. I like it. Where do you see yourself in five years? Hmm. In five years. Hmm. Oh, I hate peanut butter. There you go. <laughs> There's one thing you didn't There's know. There's one thing you didn't know about me. I don't like peanut almond butter. Almond butter, too? No, I like almond butter. I do not like Sunflower peanut butter. Sunflower butter. Uh, eh, no. But Chunky I, and smooth. No, no peanut butter. No peanut butter. <laughs> no further question. <laughs> um, five years. My five-year goal is very traditional. I want to be married with a house, dogs, kids. Like, that is my five-year thing. It, other people may say different, but that is my five year. I think you're you're at a good age. She's getting married at the end of the year. Um, I think you're the same age I was when I got married. And my my advice, my only advice to you, because it's your life, it is your journey, is enjoy that time with your husband. Give yourself some time with your spouse before you have kids, because once you do, you can't go back. And I, I think it's really important to have that foundation of that relationship before all of the chaos. And kids are the most beautiful blessing in the entire world, but your relationship changes. And if you don't have that foundation first, I think it, it, it's trickier. Because my husband and I, I think we, we'd been married almost five years, when, and we had been trying for the last year, um, but when I got pregnant, and I think that was a good amount of time for us to get all, you know, the happy hours out and, and, and the crazy trips to Vegas for 24 hours, and I think we were both ready. But, you know, I'm super excited for you and, and your journey. And, you know, if it goes south, you, you work for the Custy Queens. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, you know, that's just a joke you have to throw out there when you work for divorce attorneys. But I, I, am, I am confident that you two have the, will have the foundation to, to go through the challenges of life and overcome them. Thank you. I agree. I feel like when we get married, we don't want to have kids right away. And that shocks a lot of people. Like, we tell people... We want to be married and enjoy each other for however long we feel. But the other day, someone said, "No, you need to have kids right away." No, don't. And listen I was to that. like, "No, I, I don't want to have kids, when, kids you're, right away. when you're ready." Yeah, you know. Yeah, because you'll never be able to go to the bathroom by yourself again. <laughs> <laughs> As my two-year-old follows me around the house, and like I said, it's the most beautiful thing. But it, it does it, it 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 changes your relationship. You have different roles and responsibilities, so I think it's always important to make sure you have that foundation you know, before you embark on new adventures. Sam, where do you want to be in five years? Where do I want to be or where do I think I'll be? Where do you want to be? We'll start there. Um, I think that I would like to be in a CQ mansion, flying my helicopter and jumping helicopter, out of it. Helicopter, no, a jet. Okay, whatever. My aeroplane. Um, and I don't know, just dreaming big. I, I think for me right now, I'm embracing the unknown. Right. So like I think I've like 
gone through a lot of milestones in my life, done a lot of things, accomplished a lot of career goals that I want to accomplish. And I think that a lot of things that I thought I would accomplish, I haven't. And a lot of things that I never imagined I would accomplish, I have. And so I'm kind of embracing the new territory of what's next, especially for CQ. And that's exciting. Yeah, I love it. I, I For the longest time up until like maybe a few years ago, I would always cry on my birthday, right? It was just, I hated birthdays. I, I still don't love my birthday, but I don't cry anymore. But I would look back and go, oh, I'm not where I want to be, right? But then you look, like Sam just said, and you've I've accomplished so many things that I didn't even think I would. So even though I haven't hit certain milestones that I thought I would hit, I've hit others. And so I've kind of learned to just, like you said, em- embrace the unknown. You know, even as much as we can say worrying doesn't help anything, fear doesn't help anything, but it you have to implement that too. But no matter how much we worry about something, it doesn't change the outcome, you know? So I, I agree. I'm kind of a little bit in that land right now too, going, you know, what's next? But in five years, we will have a CQ TV show that is, you know, on on you know all the platforms and you know we will have all of you guys still being part of this journey with us the kids i will have no more kids i you know all my kids will actually my youngest will be seven at that time almost eight oh i will have no diapers and no toddlers and oh that sounds amazing and i will be able to enjoy vacations (laughs) um but i hope just to travel and continue growing this amazing team maybe offices in other states and just embracing it so all right sam why don't why don't we get with janelle and and have her walk us through what the cq process is yeah janelle yeah um well it starts from the initial phone call so if someone finds us online if they google facebook whichever way that they find us they call in and what that call looks like is someone on the phone saying hey i'm going through a divorce or hey i think i need to file for custody I don't know what I'm doing, I need help, I need to know my options. And sometimes it's more urgent, sometimes it's like I need to file a restraining order. So no call is the same, but then that's when we take over and we say, okay, let me gather some information, let me get the basics, run a conflict check, and then let me know what's going on. What's a conflict check? A conflict check is when we gather the potential client's name and the opposing party, and we have to do a check with our system to make sure that we have been spoken with either side because that could pose a potential conflict, ethical issue, everything along those lines. Yeah, and when you've been doing this a long time it and you and you represent clients in various counties, it you know, conflicts, potential conflicts do arise and I can tell you that you know, our team is very good about bringing them to our attention and sometimes it just might be a very common name, but sometimes it might be that we talked to that, you know, that husband two years ago, which that would be a case that I would say, okay, unfortunately, you know, we can't talk to that person because we've already had a conversation with, with the opposing party. Uh, so we do a really good job at making sure that our team hasn't already talked to the other side. All right. So if it's urgent and they, you know, they say the cops were there last night, you know, from the time you gather the information, what what happens next? If it's urgent, typically we like to get them on the phone with an attorney as soon as possible, um, generally same day, because if it's urgent, there's most likely an emergency situation going on. There's most likely a hearing coming up. Uh, they need representation really fast. So they go through the phone assessment. Um, and like Kristen said earlier, it's really like an experience. Um, I do it a little differently, but the way that I do it is I say, okay, just tell me what's going on instead of bombarding them with questions. And so when they tell me what's going on, they'll answer any questions that I could have. And I can just say, okay, let me get you scheduled as soon as possible. And that's generally how that that assessment process works. Yeah, and that's incredibly helpful for us as attorneys because we have heavy court calendars and we have a lot of stuff going on during the day. So on an average day, Janelle may text me or call me and say, hey, I have somebody that would like, you know, it's a time sensitive issue and they'd like to talk to you, when are you available? And then I can sort of see the initial intake information, kind of what's going on in the case, what county they're in, and then I can ask some more detailed information and really give an assessment of their case. I can give you a quote or Kristen can give you a quote. Someone from the Custody Queens team, um, an attorney will kind of walk you through the process and take you through the next step. That is the start of where our case plan is created and we take it from there. Yeah, and and more often than not, if if it's an emergency, like Janelle said, usually we will try to get an attorney on the phone right away. That that doesn't happen all of the time, but I would say majority of the time we're able to make that work. 
Uh, and what Janelle does, and I think she does this really, really, really well, is she identifies the problem, you know, by gathering just basic facts. Where are the parties cohabitating? Um, is there abuse allegations? How many kids are there? But she's able to identify the triggering facts that that kind of dictate what our strategy would be, and then she kind of you know, makes an assessment on what attorney is the right fit for this personality, uh, this county. Does this attorney, you know, know the judges say it's a San Diego case because we do have a team, you know, that that we work with that uh, practice in San Diego. But she is really good at knowing the personality type because I am not a one size fits all attorney at all. I, I am not the really nice bedside manner, you know, that that's going to tell you how great you look every day and that and it's really going to just feed you positivity. That that's not me. Um, that is other attorneys that we have. I, it's just not my personality. I'm the attorney that's going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I am very real with re- with respect to managing expectations, financial expectations, um, what I expect of you as a person, your behavior, how you conduct yourself with your kids. Uh, I think Sam practices in a very similar way. But Janelle, I think she has this gift of of talking to someone. I I listen to the calls a lot to make sure that my team is always giving the best experience possible and that they are doing their job of of gathering the info. They don't give legal advice. That's what the attorneys do. But they do gather all of the info. And it's funny because they know what I'm looking for. So, you know, they have their checklist of 10 questions. But you know, Janelle specifically, she knows like, am am I looking, what am I looking for? Is there issues with sports? Is there issues with the children at school? How far apart do they live? If the mom is going to move, would it be a move away? Uh, Do they have the financial resources or is that something I need to discuss with the client regarding a move away? And I I think that's just, you know, her working with us for eight years and, and getting to know us. Yeah. And, you know, we, we talked a little bit about emergencies, but I do want to say the sooner you call us, the better. The more time we have, the better. We can jump on cases. We often do. We take a client. We're in a hearing the next day, right? Emergencies happen and we're there for that. But the more time you can give us in advance, the more we can create a record in advance of your hearing, file appropriate documentation, come up to speed with your case. So you want to call and even if you have an attorney right now that you're maybe not happy with and you're not sure if you want to make a switch and you're not ready to at that time, still give us a call. You can call us at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-772. And you can talk to our intake team and we can set you up with a consultation and see how we can help you. So Janelle, what, um, are there any red flags that, you know, on, on, you know, we talk to lots and lots of people. So are there any red flags that you would love, you know, to, to remind or to tell Sam and I about? Um, when it comes to potential clients yes. calls? Okay. Yes. Um, some red flags for me when I get on the phone, some red flags could be, let's say that the court ruled them a vexatious litigant. Let's say that. And what does that, what does that mean? That to me, in my own words, <laughs> means that this person has, um, filed a motion with the court so many times that they don't really want to They're basically address the issue yeah. without the court yes. approving a new filing because which is a very hard thing yeah, to get. Yeah, we have fi- I think we've only filed a handful in my career and I don't think any of them have been granted. So it's a pretty hard bar to reach. So if the court makes that order, you got a problem. That's a red flag. Yeah, or a red flag like if the potential client doesn't want to take the advice of the attorney. Like they want the attorney to kind of go in their direction, but a lot of the time the attorney knows the best direction to go with their case. Yeah, and that kind of goes back to what Kristen was saying before, and Kristen's incredible at doing this. She taught me how to do it, but you know, the thing is, is that a lot of clients, they'll they'll want to call in, or potential clients will want to call in, and we encourage you to resist the urge to say, like, this is what I need done, and it needs to happen exactly this way. It's not that we don't want to have a very successful outcome and goal for you, but we need to sit with you. We need to discuss how your facts and your goals intertwine with the law and how we can work into that. If we don't, and a lot of attorneys do this, not at our firm, but a lot of attorneys do this, they're just kind of fueling your fire and then you're going to go to court and you're not going to get the result you want and you're going to have this false sense of security so at the custody queens we don't want you to have that we want you to know hey very clearly these are your options good bad or ugly and this is what your options are you as the client get to make a choice in how you want to lead your case 
but it's really important to us and I know it's really important to Kristen specifically and me um, that you're educated so that you as a client can be emboldened to make the right decisions for your case and we'll advocate for you right we'll take away the hard work we'll do the filings for you we're likely going to have totally prepped you for court depending on your county we're doing most of the talking in court if you if it is an evidentiary hearing and you're testifying you'll be prepped for it but you need to know what you're walking into and to just pretend that you can pay an attorney a certain sum and just say handle it and it's done it's unfortunately not going to result in a good probably ruling for you um, and so we want to make sure that you understand that's how important each case is to us yeah we want our clients to own their decision and like you know, we say every every show is that we're on this journey together, but this is your life. So we, we need you to own that decision, make an educated decision. And from the onset, our team is gathering the info and then we're giving you the tools and gathering the facts that allows you to make a decision, good, bad, or ugly. We, you know, that's your life. And so we, you got to own that decision. But Janelle, we're, we're almost out of time that, you know, it goes by way too fast. But Janelle, what is one of the, like the funniest things that Sam's ever done in the last eight years? What was a funny memory of Sam? Uh oh. All right, one came to my mind like right away. Uh oh. <laughs> um, it was a Halloween. You dressed up in a dinosaur costume and you walked around the parking lot in the dinosaur costume. That, yep. was, that was pretty good. It, I got my friend to put a dinosaur suit on too. And she they came. had like a dinosaur fight in the parking lot. Yeah, that was that was uh, that was I think a good it was one. Blue from Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. yeah. What about Kristen, Janelle? What's the funniest thing Kristen's done? I can tell you something that I think Kristen. I think everyone will think it's funny except for me. What? You already know it. I don't know it. Okay. Um, I don't think we could say it on air, but sometimes when you spray a certain something. Oh. I, you know, I, I like different uh, aromas. Um, I, I love to make the environment at the office fun because it, it can be so stressful at times. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so I think I was watching an episode of Shaws of Sunset and... You know, there was a spray that that can be very toxic to people around you. Um, and not and toxic in the real sense, just in the jokey, funny sense. Yes, and so I sprayed it in Sam's office. and uh, I left for the day. She left for the day. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, it... Yeah, it was a wrap for me. I was done working. And I was laughing hysterically. Um, so was everyone I'm else. Kind of, yeah, I'm kind of a jokester. <laughs> like when When things get tough... I kind of use joking and humor as a way to just kind of ground everyone because we deal with some some pretty heavy stuff, and so I just try to make light. And you yeah, know, and I, lo I love that about I you. I love a, a variety of different sprays that you know make everybody laugh. Yeah. So Janelle, in the last eight years, what do you love? What is the one thing you love about the Custy Queens? I love that we really are like a family. We really do support each other. Every day, whether it's work hours or not, I know I could call either of you and you would answer my call, you would be there for me. So the fact that we're really close knit, you know, we never really have big tiffs or anything. We're really close. We always know what each other's thinking and I never have to worry about, you know, is Sam, is Sam gonna talk to me today? Is Kristen mad at me? Like we're really, you know, we're really like a family. That would be my, my favorite part about the Custody Queens. Kristen's smiling. I love that, what? you know, I, I, I love that. And I think it's a perfect note to end on is that we really are a family and we love that you all are part of that family with us. And Janelle really 19 years old baby when she, when I hired her and she has really, she's, she's climbed the ladder and she's really shown to me uh, that she thinks outside the box and that she is a leader. And I really don't question, you know, anything that she's doing because she has proven to me to be such a quality human. And that to me is way, you're, you're not even an employee. You really are a family. And I think Sam and I treasure you. So on that note, everybody, thank you for joining us this Saturday with Janelle as we talk about navigating your family law case, the custody queen's way. Uh, thank you for joining us this Saturday and every Saturday at 8.30 a.m. Make sure you call us at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. And always remember, let, let love, love rule. rule.